Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and this is Flight Sim World from Dovetail Games, currently in early access. Now, that's a little bit of a confusing term. I'm used to alpha and beta. Alpha being this is going to be full of bugs and not really fit for consumption, but here's a sneak peek of what we're doing. Beta being we planning to launch this fairly soon. Tell us if you find anything wrong. Early access, I'm not sure. Dovetail Games Flight Sim World early access feels honestly a little bit more like alpha than beta. Now, this is the great hope, I guess, for flight simmers everywhere. Some years ago, Dovetail licensed the rights to the entertainment version of FSX and Flight. I think they used the generic umbrella term of Microsoft Flight Technologies to build a brand new sim, and this is it. It was actually due to release in 2015, then it was pushed back to 2016, and here we are in early access in 2017. It is a 64-bit sim. It uses DirectX 11, which brings with it some fairly hefty system requirements, and... Um, yeah, let's just take a look at the user interface. You're going to see the user interface here is very much a reskin of what we had in FSX. So that is to say, all the options that you're used to, or many of the options you're used to in FSX, are still here. Many of them are actually gone as well. Underlying the sim, though, there is a config file, fsw.cfg, which works the same way as fsx.cfg, with some caveats. I did try messing with the config a little while ago and ended up breaking the sim. So do it at your own peril. Let me show the settings though we'll dive in here and you can see there's the general settings that we're familiar with so are you seeing ATC in the sim almost exactly the same options that we have in FSX and even FS9 just made a little bit prettier the shock comes when you click on display settings that's it that's all you have here in display settings it's a little bit of a disappointment I guess we've grown used to having a lot of options here to tweak how the sim performs and to tweak it to our machines and many of those options are gone there's no level of detail radius setting. There's a very little information as to what graphics in general does. You've got graphical graphics settings and then aircraft. You know, graphics being now a catch-all, which does a whole ton of stuff and no detail underneath the covers as to what that actually does. In some ways, that's a good thing. In other ways, not so good. If you are familiar with FSX and prepared and FS9, you are used to having a lot more variety there in what you can tweak exactly. That's all kind of gone away. Notice I've turned anti-aliasing off and I am recording at 4K. If you're running a 4K monitor, a little bit of a tip here for you if you get 4k then typically you can turn anti-aliasing off in most video games and sims and get a bit of a performance boost that way audio not much different from how it used to be controls is in some respects better and in some respects just as bad as it always was there's a calibration screen here which doesn't really calibrate anything it really lets you dial up the sensitivity of the various axes that you're using and in the axes here you can assign axes and you know bind your controls up the way you want to use them it doesn't do that much it's still got the same quirks it used to have for example if you go into buttons and keys it is very hard to choose in fact it's impossible to choose a, a joystick the joystick section here and just wipe everything out it's something i love in dcs world that i've always missed in fsx Realism, just the same as it always was. Uh, apparently I have unlimited fuel, didn't realize that. And auto mixture will turn that off, there we go. Other than that, it's just the same as it always was. And now we have a profile. This is cloud-based, I think. It stores your name, your first and last name, where you are in the world, whether in the United States or Europe or whatever else. Profile actually ties into this tab at the top here, which keeps track of everything you've been doing. Now, I have spent quite a bit of time with this. I did not get it early. I got it at release, and I got it for free because I had flight sim school flight school dovetails flight school so i didn't pay for this but it wasn't sent to me early but even so i thought i would spend a bit of time on this because obviously the if you've been following the community in any way shape or fashion you are already aware that this has not been that well received i'm trying to keep an open mind and i'll try to do so throughout this video uh, and show you the good and the bad on this but given that it's been it's had quite a rough landing, I guess, since it arrived. I decided to spend quite a bit of time in it. I don't actually like the profile page too much. You have a bunch of achievements here, which are actually compelling. Trying to go through the achievements and unlock everything is quite good fun. The statistics here is very misleading, though. Total flight time, solo float time. These are flights that have culminated in a landing. So if you want to try stuff out and take off, look around, and then restart the flight, it doesn't track that. 
and notice here it's also not tracking my takeoffs separate from my landing. So I have actually got quite a lot of takeoffs, not so many landings because I was just trying stuff out and looking around, but it only tracks the completed flights, which is a bit of a, a letdown, I guess. I'd much rather they track more stuff. Notice it also logs the flight time in individual aircraft here. So the PA-46, the Piper, another Piper there, another Piper there, Diamond there, and so on. There are a number of default aircraft included with this. I'll show you those in a second. All GA at the moment and Dovetail have said that the, the, what they want to do is set a benchmark for third parties to match, I guess, with their aircraft by building out some really quite good GA aircraft at launch. Some are good, some not so good. It is early access. Missions is probably the highlight of Dovetail's new sim, to be completely frank with you. There are a set of missions in here which are like adventures with some pretty good recorded voiceovers and stuff, and they're really good fun. I actually got quite engrossed in working through this, and I've decided I'm probably going to do some videos straight after I do this one. I'm just going to spend a couple of hours sat at my desk here and record some mission videos because they really are quite enjoyable. Training is flight school. If you had Dovetail Games Flight School, you will be intimately familiar with this. Waltham Flying Club there for your light aircraft pilot training. Over here to Wings Flight Academy in Germany for your multi-engine piston rating. And over here, Eagle Pilot School in Arizona for your private pilot training. Exactly the same. As far as I can tell, I've not done any of the lessons yet. But as far as I can tell, exactly the same as we had in flight school. And then free flight. Free flight is where you do the free flight stuff. And this is both... A bit of fun and quite enjoyable at times and frustrating at others. Let me show you what I mean. First, we'll go through aircraft selection. These are the default aircraft that you get. They're beautifully modeled in terms of visuals, not so much in terms of performance uh, in some areas, but again, early access. I did find very early on with the Seneca, for example. I haven't tried the Seneca since this got an update this week, but the Seneca, I could kill the mixture and the aircraft would just be quite fine and keep flying. It didn't really bother too much. Bit of a letdown, but early access, they're going to be tweaking this stuff so we can choose an aircraft here click on it and then we can go if it doesn't crash which it just did good let's try that once again go back to the home screen free flight choose the aircraft the diamond there we go now it's working weather conditions there is no dynamic weather engine in this bit of a letdown but dovetail have said on their live streams and other places it's coming right now you just have preset themes so you can choose cold front fair weather fogged in and so on we'll go fair weather the themes here are not that different to the themes that we already had in fsx and even in prepared prepared of course is built on esp fsx's core is really i guess is technically not but it kind of is esp so they have the same core underneath them and then this the airports look at this you you can put in an airport you want to fly out of so ksfb and then it moves the map over here and this is the flight planner and i only started really using this in the past couple of days trying to get some of the long flights in to really spend time with this it's actually not bad as an intro level flight planner for people new to sims who aren't familiar with the full flight plans that i would typically produce on my cop on my uh copyright on my fully loaded videos uh, it's not that complex but it is pretty cool for example I can plan a flight here from KSFB down to Miami and what I can do is just click on these airports or VORs and plot my flight which is nice let me zoom out here I couldn't find a way of moving the map around which is annoying but even so look I can keep going down to Vera Beach and we'll zoom out a bit more why can't I shift this there must be keys that I'm missing but no so I need to zoom out, I guess, to get down to where I want to get down to. So we'll keep on coming down here, Palm Beach, Holly, um, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and then all the way down to Miami. So you can set a full flight plan here. The letdown is that once you land, even if you make it from Orlando Sanford, in this case, down to Miami, if you don't land at each of these waypoints, then it actually flashes up that you failed to complete these objectives. They're not objectives, they're waypoints. But even so, I'm sure that's something that will get ironed out later on. Doing a flight where you just take off and just land, you just put in one airport and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You click on confirm and away you go into the sim. Let me show you this. Now, I'm going to show you this. We'll get in here and we'll start looking at performance and graphics and all that stuff. But then I'm going to come out and do it again because I found some stuff out. So Diamond, Fairweather, Orlando Stanford, or we'll click on start. And I will see you once it's loaded up. Notice in order to gain credit for flight time, like I just showed you on the profile page, you must land at an airport. 
And here we are. You get the same load times that you do in FSX. So as you start adding more aircraft in once the third parties get involved, it is going to slow down load times just the way as it just the same way it does in the old sim. Notice as well there, I was spinning the view around, it does support track IR right now, which is kind of cool. Not much to see here in pre-flight, and you'll notice that I could not specify where I want the aircraft to start. It just put me on a runway. Hopefully that changes. We lost some options there. But the reason I chose Sanford is the sim right now is using Orbex FTX Global as the global scenery. And it's actually, it doesn't look that much better than FSX. In fact, it looked a lot worse until the patch this week where everything was overexposed and quite washed out in terms of colors. But if we go here to nearest tower, that's what Sanford looks like. And those of you who follow me on Facebook saw me post this very screenshot uh, some days ago. It's not impressive at all. And this is where a lot of the letdown comes from. People were hoping with the new sim, it being a new sim, everything would look wonderful, next generation. It doesn't. It doesn't look that much different to FSX, honestly, with FTX Global. Uh, there are some obvious differences. For example, if I zoom in on the aircraft here, in fact, let me change the camera and we'll pop on outside and go around some of these preset views. You'll see it, it's pretty good looking. Whoops, not that. There we go. Okay, so, obvious differences between old and new here the modeling on these aircraft is actually very very good it really is quite good some nice effects there some nice shadowing we've also got shadows now in the cockpit so once i jump back in here you'll see some shadows in the cockpit this is pretty impressive it's got that next generation feel and look to it which is what we were hoping for shame the scenery doesn't match up if i do go get into the cockpit here you can see these are pretty well modeled. There's a lot of detail in here. There are cockpit shadows now, just like we have in Prepared, which is a good thing as well. And I know that Dovetail are trying to work on making everything in here clickable and workable. At the moment, in this aircraft, actually, most of it is. In some of the aircra other aircraft, no, it's not. But you'll notice G1000s in here, and they work. They do everything they should do. So if I go over here and click on Flight Plan, there's my Flight Plan page. It's got some quirks and some bugs that gain early access. If I start trying to key stuff in, for example, uh, where was it? I gotta remember how this was working. Now, there you go, you can see there's some corruption there. Whoops, see now I'm kind of locked onto this button and I can't get off it. So little bugs like that are frustrating. And every time I press space now, it wants to jump back, so I can't actually change the view. Thanks a lot, but you get the idea, right? So there are some bugs and some issues here that need to be worked on, and, and yeah, now I'm completely screwed because I started messing with that, which is great. I can't actually get out. There we go. I need to come off of that menu. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I need to come off of the G1000's menu there in order to get back in to manipulating my view with the space bar and the free look thing. No add-ons available for this right now. So no FSU IPC, no um, Easy Dock, no Chase Plane, nothing like that. Hopefully these things come aboard later on if Dovetail can get the third-party developers on board. Anyway, I wanted to show you this because this is the probably the worst view of, of Dovetail's flight sim world. And it's the view that a lot of people are putting out there on social media, me included, because obviously you go to your favorite airport straight away and the initial what impressions are not that good. The other initial impression is not good is performance. Notice I'm running this in a window. The reason why is as soon as I put this in full screen mode, I get less than 10, 15 frames per second. Now my machine is fairly beefy. I'm running a Devil's Canyon uh, processor. I've got a GTX 1080 graphics card in here, a lot of memory, and still less than 10, less than 15 frames per second. Putting it into a window though gives me not bad. I'm up at 35 frames per second now. If I turn on some of the other visual effects such as rain, that will drop into the low 20s. Performance leaves a little to be desired, but again, early access. Now, having said that, if you get out here and you go to some of the areas that Dovetail has spent quite a bit of time on, you'll find the graphics are considerably improved. Let me show you. So let's go all the way out here. There is an achievement that I recently unlocked. So if I go to my statistics, let me see if I can find it. Uh, free as a bird, nope, far away. Local, EGTO, uh, Rochester in England, which is obviously near where Dovetail are based. If you fly there, it's actually very impressive indeed. Let me show you. Free flight. So we'll choose that same aircraft, the Diamond, and weather conditions will go fair weather, and we're taking off from this time, EGTO. And we'll actually do a little circuit here and show you what it looks like. I'm using my yoke 
using my virtual fly yoke here. I did have some issues configuring my controls. I have more controls than many of you have, and it gave me some problems. But again, happy to put out with that for now, given the early access status of this. I'm not gonna cut the loading here. I want you to see the load time. It is not fast. It is the same load times that we're used to with the older Sims. Um, a little bit annoying, a little bit frustrating, but I do know that behind the scenes is doing a great deal of work. One of the things Dovetail have said that they're working on is also, of course, balancing performance between the CPU and the GPU. Not really seeing that either in this early access build right now. Still seems to be running on predominantly a single core on my main processor and not really pushing the graphics card too hard either, which is again, where the disappointment on the frame rates comes in. Also worth bearing in mind, I do keep saying early access and I do want to bear that in mind and have an open mind, but this is realistically reskinned FSX compiled for 64-bit. How we've lost performance, I don't really know, but we did. Anyway, here we are in Rochester and it looks a little bit weak, but let me get up in the air. I'm gonna move my rudder pedals here so we can do that and show you what you get once you're in the air. I had the graphics as you saw on that graphics screen pretty much turned up to 11. And I was quite amazed by this when I did that uh, flight to get that achievement flying out of Dovetail's local airport. I did it in rainy weather and my jaw was a little bit, a little bit open. Not really on the floor, but open when I saw the level of detail here. Check this out. Maybe I can go to an external view and you'll get a better view. Tons and tons and tons and tons of autogen. Actually not very bad at all. I'm trying to get the hang of using the default cameras, which is not something I ever do in FSX. So bear with me with my uh, inept camera management. Let me look around here. You can see tons of autogen. Not too shabby at all. It does look pretty good, but what you will notice Put the camera back here. You know what? I've got track IR on. What am I doing? What a noob. There we go. What you will notice here is a ton of detail here, no detail here. So it seems what Dovetail have done to work on the graphical fidelity of this new sim and try to keep performance up is actually reduce the level of detail radius. So you can actually see almost a circle here. You can actually see that radius that it's very detailed up to this line. And then beyond that line, not so much. Quite blurry, quite fuzzy. The kind of stuff that we in the flight sim using community try to avoid in configuring FSX. They've actually kind of baked it in. Hopefully though, tweaking and uh, work on optimizing this and leaving early access will fix that and give us at least more options in the UI where we can tweak that instead of having to dive into a config file to mess with it. And by the way, as I said, I did mess with the config file, not for this video though. You're running a stock config file for this video, really it's just to show you what it's like, what you're gonna see out of the box. Let me bring out the frame rate here. Because of all this auto gen, I'm running about 30 frames per second now. So it's dropped a little bit from previously. And I'm actually running one of the lighter aircraft in terms of the load that it puts on frame rates. Any changes to the flight model? Actually, it feels like yes, there have been some changes to the flight model. It feels a little bit more fluid, which is a term that I typically use with X-Plane because X-Plane is such a fluid and dynamic feeling simulator. They've also built in AccuFeel from A2A simulations. So on those longer flights that I've done, I noticed when I would get a bit of a crosswind, a bit of buffeting, I would hear that wind hitting the airframe, which is a wonderful thing. Big fan of everything A2A do, and AccuFeel in particular really adds quite a lot to flying these GA aircraft and really upping the level of immersion. There's the airport. Let me see if I can land this and I'm going to show you one of the missions after that. So it feels every bit like it should feel with quirks. As I said, some of these aircraft are lacking fidelity. Some of them are lacking detail. Some of them are just wrong uh, in terms of how things are working. Like dropping, cutting the mixture, going to mixture cutoff in some of the aircraft didn't actually do anything and we were flying along with the engines running just fine. But anyway, it's not that I, I'm gonna, people are gonna be shocked. The headline is gonna be frugal says it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. It's not what we were hoping for at all. It's a long way off what we were hoping for with uh, uh, the new FSX, FSX 2.0 if you will. Uh, it's not that but it's not terrible and it is early access. So hopefully, hopefully things improve. 
Now, Dovetails, this is not their first rodeo. Uh, Dovetail is a trading name of railsimulator.com, and previous experience going the route that they're going with this was in terms of buying the license to Microsoft Train Simulator and then turning it into their own, which is the train sim that you now see regularly plastered with all this DLC all over Steam. So, they are old hands somewhat, uh, taking legacy technology and updating it. You can draw your own conclusions as to whether those updates are good or bad. I'm not going to get into that right here and right now. I'm going to try to just view this for what it is. But it's not terrible. It's really not terrible. If you come into this with the expectation that it's going to be a radically improved FSX, you are going to be sorely and gravely disappointed. If you're looking for something that's even better than prepared, again, sore and grave disappointment. It's also going to be very much dependent, the success of this is going to be very much dependent, as I've said in the news show a couple of times, on just how many third-party developers come on board. It is a noble effort of Dovetail to say they want to set a benchmark by building high-quality default aircraft into the sim for third-party developers to meet or exceed, but Another way of looking at it is, I would rather they spend a lot more time building an awesome, amazing simulation platform and let the experts do what the experts do. You know, let A2A come in here, let PNDG come in here. And that's probably a bad way of putting it. I'm sure Dovetail are letting A2A and PNDG come in here. The problem is the business model and a requirement for an official add-on at least to be sold through Steam and through Dovetail's own store is going to kind of limit maybe some of those developers. It would have been nice as well, especially with the prepared announcement this week, prepared version 4, would have been nice to see Dovetail adopt the same model that Lockheed Martin did there and involving these third-party developers a lot earlier in this platform's uh, development so that out of the gate we would have add-ons from some of those key add-on manufacturers, A2A, PNDG, even Carinado or Iris. That would have been very, very nice, but it doesn't look like that's the way it's going. Who knows though, early access in six months, eight months, a year, maybe when this leaves early access, we are going to see that flood. Now, obviously, I'm not flying this very well. I am very fast. I'm a little bit high right now. I'm just kind of giving you more of you of the scenery and performance. A little bit jerky, a little bit stuttery there. And the stutters that I've experienced are a bit of a surprise. 64-bit doesn't improve performance automatically. You're moving a simulator into 64-bit. doesn't automatically say, here you go, you get 20 extra frames per second. What it does do, though, is let you load a lot more data into memory, particularly scenery data, which means the stutters that we're used to in FSX, which are typically caused by loading in, interpreting, and then rendering scenery, would go away. I have seen stutters in this sim, which was a bit of a shock to me. Even so. Let's go down here. Pretty good. Not bad. It feels very fluid. It doesn't feel as on rails as some of the Microsoft based flight sims have felt at launch. Whoops, not the best landing in the world, but it'll do. And we're down. Albeit slightly wonky. Let's hit the brakes here and see if we can stop. Probably not. We are going to careen through the trees. See, that's awkward. I do have crashes turned on. My wing is obviously scraping the ground there. And nothing happened. But again, early accident. Here we are now going sideways. Where's that crash detection? Oh, there it is. Great stuff. Okay, let's get out of this and let me show you some of the missions. Now, obviously, this is not an instructional video. I'm not showing you how to fly. I'm really just exercising the sim a little bit here, so do grant me some slack there. The missions are good fun. The missions are a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to jump into the first one that you get when you first fire up uh, Flight Sim World, which is this one, Los Angeles Approach. Very simple mission. You're in a Seneca. It's a sunny day. You're approaching LAX. All you have to do is land. Very simple. Five-minute mission, as it says. Very easy. But you get a good feel here for how some of the aircraft perform. And you'll hear some of the voiceovers as well once it gets started. Oh, I can click on Start now. Here we go. All right, so we're ready to go. I'm going to start here. Bit of music. A little bit of voiceover stuff coming in. And all we have to do is land. Kilo, you are on seven left. There's the mission marker. Let's bring up the power a little bit here. Okay, we are clear for landing. Cleared, so we're going to do a pre-landing checklist now. The voiceovers take care of that, which is cool. This is just in missions, by the way, not in uh, free flight. Got to fasten. I don't know which button I have assigned to flaps. I'm going to need those. We're going to 
speed down because I'm going to need to go gear down in a moment. Altimeter has been set, radio frequencies are set. Pop RPM is up, we need to go gear down. I'm a little bit fast for this. Let me see if I can bring some speed off here. Gear down, please. Yes, gear down, please. We're a little bit fast for that. Let's do that now. All right, gear's coming down. I think gear is down. Flaps if required. Well, flaps are going to be required. Let me put out the first stage. There we go. Flaps are going down. This is going to be cool. There's a neat feature. They've taken that uh, replay system that we had in FSX and kind of built it into the UI a little bit better. So when I finish this, you'll be able to click on replay and see a really quite high fidelity replay of what you just did. I'll just a little bit low here. I actually have the sound turned down in my headphones, which is awkward because I'm used to hearing the engines a lot more. I'm trying to trim this a little bit. I'm trying to get those lights to change to red and white, not all red which shows me I'm on the glide path. From what I can tell in the flight so far, they've not fixed the issues with the ILS lights being a little bit misleading. Sorry, ILS lights, the uh, runway lights, Pappy lights, and Vassy lights being a little bit misleading. Maybe that will come later as well. Looks like I'm on the glide path of the two runways to the left here at LAX, but not the one I'm trying to land on. I am still a little bit fast as well, but that's okay. 400 feet per minute rate of descent. quite a lot of detail there at that airport. Some of the airports and some of the areas in here seem to have a lot more detail than others. They're kind of like showcase airports. Pretty much whenever you're doing a mission, you're getting really good scenery, really good environmental effects. Once you jump into free flight, then you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit as to how it's going to appear in the sim, whether it's going to be really good or, or pretty weak, honestly. But no weaker than FSX is just, again, a, a little disappointing given that this is built off FSX. We were all expecting something a little bit better than we have got, but we've got to bring out that early access clause once again. It's early access. Who knows what this is going to look like in however many months or years even it might be until release. Notice the Kerbal Space Program was in early access slash beta for a long time, years, I think, before it's released. Not sure what Dovetail are planning, whether they have a plan there for a few months or a year or two years before this actually launches. Not really sure. They have said they want to involve the community. See, there's my plane all wonky again. I, I don't really believe it should be. That was a pretty nice landing. A bit fast. We'll look at the replay and we'll find out what happened. Again, not trying to be instructional in the flying here. Really just exercising the sim. But yeah, Dovetail have said they wanted to involve the community. That's why they went with early access. But strangely, seen very little involvement from them in the community since this thing went into early access. Concerns on forums and things largely going unanswered, but I haven't looked in depth, so I could be very mistaken there. Nice flight, can't wait to stretch my legs as soon as this aircraft stops. Oh, he wants me to exit the runway before I can finish this mission. Now the aircraft's not wonky anymore. And then we'll look at the replay and see if I really did bring it down on the right wing, which it felt like, but I shouldn't have been. Let's see if we can turn off here. Take that high speed exit there. Once we exit the wrong way, I think that's the point at which it will say mission complete. Maybe. Let's cross the line. Yeah. There we go. The end of the mission. Now, if this was a free flight, I'm not trying this on a mission, but on a free flight, I would be able to bring out the replay. There is the replay button. It's not lit up. No, so can't do it. But normally you would click on replay at that point and you could get a nice replay going and, and see how you did it last, the last leg of the landing and so on. So in general, my first impressions, it's, it's, this is a tricky one. This is a really tricky one. If you are new to simulation, there's quite a bit of fun in this. Honestly, the missions are pretty cool. I haven't tried the training yet, but it looks just like flight school. So again, a nice introduction to flight simulation and flying in general. If you are a seasoned diehard veteran of flight simulators in general, be that FSX prepared or even explained, you are going to be sorely disappointed at this point. You know, FSX users in particular, we've lost a lot of options. We've lost performance tuning options. Uh, we've lost the ability to set where your aircraft starts. We've lost the ability to set fuel and weight on the 
aircraft. We've lost a dynamic weather engine. We've lost performance. You know, all these things are a grave disappointment and you're not going to be seeing visuals that are in any way better than FSX or prepared. In fact, in some respects, they're worse because we can't configure things like level of detail radius unless you go and tweak the config files. So, I don't know. Overall, this is not a bad sim and I have had fun so far, at least with the missions. It's not in any way my go-to sim right now. That remains a, a tie, I think, between DCS World, X-Plane and Prepared. And I'm curious to see how this comes along. I will do update videos on this every few months at least to look at how it's coming along with all the patches and keep you appraised in the new show of any third parties that do sign up to release add-ons for this aircraft. That's all I can say really. It's not bad. It is a disappointment based on what we were expecting and it has a long way to go. Hopefully Dovetail are aware of how far it's got to go and don't try to rush this into full release within a month or six weeks or whatever else, but do take the time and take six months or a year and really polish this up and realize the platform's potential. Leave me a comment with your views in the comment section below. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you very soon.